Hello everyone, welcome back to my math series. Today we're going to be learning a bit of calculus, some limits, and how to find the slope of any point on a quadratic function. So first of all, let's go back to what a derivative is, and that's basically the slope of a line. For example, right here, from here to there, let's say this is a and f of a and this point is b and f of b then the slope between these two lines is f of b minus f of a over b minus a so in calculus oh wait let's add an m here equals so in calculus, we use this kind of same idea, except we're using this thing called limits, where like, for example, you know, h goes to zero. But anyway, assuming that this is pretty clear, we can go on to learn what limits are. So limits are basically the same thing as this kind of finding the slope between two points kind of action, except we're trying to get these two points closer and closer together. Wait, hold on. They're getting closer and closer together, infinitely close. Like, 0 0.0000000. Like, one at the end somewhere. Point dot dot dot. So basically, we're going to use limits to figure out how close, uh, at what the actual slope is of this kind of quadratic function. Because let's say you have this kind of quadratic function. If you zoom in close enough at any point, it begins to look like a straight line, for example, right here. Let's select that. Um, Control C. Oh wait, no, we can just zoom it out and keep zooming it out, keep zooming it out, keep making it zoom in. in. So now we see it's, it ba it's basically a straight line at this point. So that's kind of the point that I'm trying to illustrate. It's that if we just zoom in close enough, we can apply this same slope idea to any particular location you'd like on a quadratic function. So let's try to use the definition of a derivative with limits. So this is h going to 0. As h approaches 0, we have um, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So this is the limit definition of a derivative. So basically this just comes from that same idea of f of b minus f of a over b minus a. It's kind of just the same thing except we're substituting in this h here. But anyway, using this definition we'll be able to do the limit of some quadratic functions. So, first of all, let's do um, the derivative of x squared. So, we'll have f prime of x squared. So, let's do an equal sign. So, we're going to use the limit definition to prove for now, just to make this slightly more clear. h goes to 0. That's a bad arrow. But, anyway we'll have f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So what does this come out to? Well, the function is x squared, whatever's inside of here is squared. So x plus h squared minus x squared over h. Now, something I forgot to do here you might have noticed is that I forgot to do this limit symbol thing 
right here and if you're doing like math homework or something like that then your teacher might get incredibly angry at you for not writing this at every step and now I'm not I'm not writing it at this step because that's just like the the kind of the first thing this already means derivative so we don't even have the limit thing there so let's try to simplify this a little bit but uh, for reference right now h is 0 basically going to it so we can't divide a number by 0 so we'll have to do more work let's add some equal signs hold on let's add the equal sign here equals limit as h approaches 0 of x squared plus 2xh as you remember like this is the a plus b parentheses squared that kind of thing so it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared except we're substituting in these things minus x squared over h so still can't do it because h is on the bottom so we're going to try to fix that delete this top half won't be needing that so we see here there's two x's one positive one negative x squared so we can just do two x wait limit as h approaches zero it's probably good to get into the habit of writing the limit sign first plus h squared over h so now we can notice that there's h's in every single term so let's try to factor it out on the top equals limit h goes to zero this gets a bit tiring by the way okay 2x plus h because we took h out of each of these now it's all over h and we see now that we won't have to divide by zero anymore if we just cross these out so now it's limit as h goes to zero of we have to draw the box now or like some kind of parentheses I'll just draw a box 2x plus h because there's two terms and you have to like isolate these so that your teacher knows that it's not kind of this thing plus h so h is zero basically zero we can just imagine it as that so it's just equal to 2x there we go so that's the derivative of x squared equals f prime of x squared now let's clear everything and let's go back now uh, if we remember it's a y equals a x squared plus b x plus c this is standard form for the quadratic equations and now we know how to do the derivative of x squared but if you don't know how to do a and for b that's just the constant multiple rule where you can just multiply it by the derivative of like x squared basically just like 2x times a so that would be the derivative of this kind of term but um, I'm not gonna prove that right now since it's pretty basic now let's go on to bx how are we supposed to do that well you can just take the derivative each term by each term and we can basically just imagine it as y equals bx this the derivative of, of this will be the same as the derivative of this so if we have this kind of line it, it's a it's a line because it's just straight I think 
you guys get what I mean. Like, if this is a coordinate plane, then it's just a straight line. Doesn't matter which way you go, it's just a straight line. So, what we can tell from this is that y kind of b kind of works as the slope here. It's just kind of like uh, m instead in this kind of uh, linear equation standard form y equals mx plus uh, b but these are not the same thing that might have been very confusing I'm sorry if it was I'm talking about like this second part where I mentioned this but what we get from that is that the derivative of bx d dx uh, of bx equals b so now we know that this thing is x 2x times a plus b and for constants we can do the same thing like let's say it's y equals 1 or y equals 2 those are just horizontal lines with a slope of 0 so we can just count these out when we're taking the derivative now let's do the actual derivative of an, a real function now that we know how to take the, derivati the derivative of the standard form of quadratic equations so here we have um, let's see 3x squared plus let's say 4x plus 5 so uh, we can dy dx because we're taking the derivative of y, the function, with regards to x. Now, that equals. So, remember, it's uh, 2xa. So, a is 3. 3. x is x. And then there's 2 here. So, it's going to be 6x. 6x. And this remember it's kind of like this straight line with the slope of 4 so we can count that as 4 or just b and this we can ignore that because it's a constant and here's our derivative for x at any point now what's important to note about this is that uh, this is not like the actual derivative. You have to plug in x, like some value for x, to actually know what the derivative is. It's not just 6x plus 4. For example, let's say you're trying to find x at 3. You have to plug in 3 for x, and you'd get 18, which is 6 times 3, plus 4 equals 22. So, that's the derivative, the slope. 22 kind of looks like a straight upwards line, like a vertical line almost. And if this is the coordinate plane, 1, 2, 3. Actually, that, that's incredibly inaccurate. It would probably look something like, you know, that, where that point would be, would have the slope of 22. But that's just a kind of demonstration and really this is all you have to know for doing the derivative of quadratic functions 